Now let's look at the cardiac cycle. That is how the blood moves through the heart with each heartbeat. And that involves several steps and pressure changes that occur in the atriums and ventricles in order to be able to move the blood from one chamber to the next or out into the arteries. And then of course we have to make sure the blood is going in the correct direction and that's where the valves come into play and the proper closing of those valves and that's what ends up producing our heart sounds. So first let's get some definition. The cardiac cycle is again a period between the start of one heartbeat and the next and that gives us an idea of how we're moving blood through the heart. Two components of that is systole and diastole. Systole refers to contraction, diastole refers to relaxation. So we can actually end up with four conditions, whether it's the atriums or the ventricles that are contracting or relaxing. So when we say atrial diastole, we're saying the atriums are relaxed. When we say atrial systole, the atriums are contracting. Ventricular diastole obviously would be the ventricles relaxed and ventricular systole would be the ventricles contracting. Makes sense. Now if we use the terms diastole and systole by themselves, that's indicating just what the ventricles are doing. Since they're the more important chambers as far as moving blood through the heart and affecting blood pressure, we just, when we say systole alone, that's the ventricles are contracting or diastole alone, the ventricles are relaxed. All right, so let's look at the cardiac cycle. And it's just that, a cycle. That's why this is in a circle moving around. So as soon as we start the cycle and then end the cycle, we start it all over again. It just keeps going on 24 seven. To get oriented on this diagram, first notice here that this inner circle here indicates whether the atriums are in systole, that is they're contracting, or the atriums are in diastole, where they're relaxing. So you can see they're relaxing for a lot longer period of time during the cardiac cycle than they are in systole when they're contracting. The green, the light green here indicates the ventricles are in diastole and the darker green here indicates that the ventricles are in systole. So here the ventricles are contracting and the lighter green for a longer period of time, the ventricles are relaxed. So if we go through the steps of the cardiac cycle, I want you to think of this as a five step process. And we're gonna move around here and see what's going on in each step. So first step is ventricular filling with the atriums in diastole. So this, this picture here. Blood is coming in from the inferior and superior vena cava uh, or from the pulmonary veins and entering the atriums. From there, the blood is simply going to flow because of gravity and just general movement of the blood, it's going to move into the ventricles. So the ventricles are filling with blood. Okay, so we have ventricular filling, but again, simply that the atriums and diastole, they haven't done anything. The next step is ventricular filling continues, but now the atriums are in systole, that is they contract. Think of this as the ventricles are filling and they're getting pretty full. So we want to squeeze just a few more drops in. And so the vent, excuse me, the atriums are going to contract and squeeze more blood into the ventricles. So that would be um, atrial systole, but we're still, the ventricles are filling. The next step is isovolumetric ventricular contraction. Now that's a long lengthy name. Let's break it down. Iso means same like isotonic. Volumetric would mean refer to volume. So isovolumetric would mean the same volume. That is the volume of the blood doesn't change. So in other words, we're not going to be moving blood anywhere during isovolumetric ventricular contraction. The ventricular contraction refers to that the ventricles are contracting. So here in this step, the ventricles are contracting, but blood isn't moving anywhere. So what's going on? Well, the ventricles begin to contract. That pushes blood up against those AV um, valves here and here, and that causes those valves to close. The blood is also going to be pushed up against the semilunar valves, but the pressure in here isn't great enough to force those valves open. 
there's higher pressure behind the valves in the arteries than there is in the ventricles at this point in time. So the ventricles are contracting, the blood isn't going up into the atriums because the AV valves are closed, preventing it, and blood isn't going into the arteries because the pressure is higher here in the arteries so we can't open up the semilunar valves. So blood doesn't go anywhere. The next part is ventricular ejection. Again, the ventricles are still contracting, but now they're contracting even more. So they continue to contract, squeezing even more, and the pressure is increased enough here to cause those semilunar valves now to open because now the pressure here is greater in the ventricles than in the arteries, and therefore blood can move out into those arteries. Okay, so this would be ventricular ejection. We're ejecting the blood out to the arteries during ventricular systole. Then the last step is isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. Again, look at the name, isovolumetric, so same volume, so blood isn't moving anywhere, but now the ventricles are relaxed. The ventricles have gone into diastole. So they're relaxing, the pressure in here is dropping. Since the pressure in here is dropping, the blood here in the arteries is actually higher than what's in the ventricles. So that blood is going to try to move from greater pressure to lesser pressure from the arteries into the ventricles, but what stops it is the semilunar valves. So the semilunar valves close, preventing blood flow from those arteries back into the ventricles. That'd be the wrong way. At the same time, the atriums are filling again but their pressure is still lower than the pressure in the ventricles. And therefore, we can't have blood going from the atriums and the ventricles yet, simply because the pressure here is too high. The blood isn't gonna go from the ventricles into the atriums, because remember, we've got those AV valves blocking the way. As soon as these ventricles relax enough to drop the pressure below the atrial pressure, we're back into ventricular filling, and then the blood starts moving from the atriums into the ventricles, and we start the cardiac cycle all over again. Now, this is another way to look at the cardiac cycle. So we can see these pressure changes. It's the same steps that we had in the previous slide, but now I want you to see it in the sense of a graph. Don't get too bogged down by all these lines. We're going to look at those one by one and get an idea of what's going on. So first of all, one, let me tell you that you should get a color copy of this slide because in black and white, you can't see the color differences. It makes it hard to follow what's going on. So first of all, let's get a general orientation here. The phases that we've been talking about, one, two, three, four, five, I've listed over here and they are listed on the bottom of the, of the figure, okay? When the ventricles are in systole, it's in blue. When the ventricles are in diastole, it's in this various shades of orange. So this is not showing anything about atrium, systole, or diastole, just the ventricles in systole and then diastole in the orange. Up here is a measure of the pressure in each of the important chambers. So here at the bottom, you can see in the red line, this is left atrial pressure. Up here in the red line is the aortic pressure. And we're just gonna do the left side of the heart on this. Um, the right side of the heart's doing the exact same thing at the exact same time, but the pressures are gonna be a little different. So let's just think about what's going on, on the left side. So here's the left, or excuse me, the aortic pressure. Here's the the red line here is the left atrial pressure. And then the black line that goes up and down is the left ventricular pressure. Another line I wanna point out, and that's this line. This is the ventricular volume, how much blood is actually in the ventricles. And so you can see it goes up and then decreases as we move through this cardiac cycle. So let's start right here. We're gonna start with one in the diagram, but since one's kind of chopped off here, let's pick one that has is completely filled or shown. So we can go up to one. Now one is ventricular filling. 
with the atriums in diastole. So you can see that the pressure in the atriums is slightly higher than the pressure in the um, ventricles, the black. So blood is going to move from the atriums into the ventricles, filling the ventricles. And you can see here the volume of the ventricles is increasing. When we step into phase two, the atriums are contracting. So you can see the little bump up in pressure to squeeze some more blood into the ventricles. But the pressure in the atrium is still bigger than the pressure in the ventricles. So blood's going to move from the atriums to the ventricles and the ventricles continue to fill. Then we move into phase three. Now phase three is when the, notice is when the ventricles are starting to contract. This is isovolumetric ventricular contraction. Again, the blood's not gonna go anywhere, but the ventricles are contracting. So notice at this point, the ventricular pressure now is greater than the atrial pressure. So that's gonna cause the blood to push up against those AV valves and cause them to shut. That gives us our first heart sound, that slamming shut of those AV valves we hear as a heart sound. Now the pressure in the ventricle is less than the pressure in the aorta, notice. So the blood would want to go from the aorta to the ventricle. Remember, always blood's going to move from greater pressure to lesser pressure. So blood would want to go from the, the atria, no, excuse me, the aorta into the ventricle, but it can't because the semilunar valves are closed at this time. So the ventricular pressure is in between the aortic pressure and the atrial pressure. So there's nowhere for the blood to go. It can't go into the atriums because the AV valves are closed and it can't, the blood can't go into the aorta because the pressure is not big enough to overcome the higher pressure in the aorta. Blood can't go from the aorta into the ventricles because the semilunar valves are closed and stopping that. Then we move into the next phase, phase four, that's ventricular ejection. Now the ventricles are continuing to contract and they finally the pressure gets greater in the ventricles than in the aorta. At that time then, since the pressure in the ventricles is greater in the aorta, blood is going to move from the ventricles into the aorta and the semilunar valve opens up. Therefore, you can see here, the blood volume drops because we're emptying or ejecting the blood that's in the ventricles. When the ventricles start to relax, we're going to be starting phase five. That's isovolumetric ventricular relaxation. Again, the ventricles begin to relax, so their pressure drops below the aortic pressure. So notice the ventricle again is below the aortic pressure. That means blood is going to want to go from greater pressure in the aorta to lesser pressure in the ventricle, but it can't because what valves close? The semilunar valves. The semilunar valves close, shut, so blood can't go from the aorta into the ventricle, and there's our second heart sound by those semilunar valves closing. Blood from the ventricles is greater pressure than the blood in the atriums, but blood can't go from the ventricle to the atrium because the AV valves are closed. Okay? And blood can't go from the atriums in the ventricles because the pressure is too low in the atriums. It's lower than the ventricular pressure, so it can't move that direction. So blood can't go anywhere, can't go into the aorta, can't go in the ventricles, or excuse me, in the atriums, so the blood doesn't move anywhere, therefore it's isovolumetric. And you can see it's kind of flat lined here. There's blood's not moving anywhere, so the volume stays the same. And then as soon as the pressure drops below the atriums, as the ventricles continue to relax, we'll step back into phase one, and that's ventricular filling so that the atrial pressure is greater than the ventricular pressure and the atrium start to fill again, or excuse me, the ventricles begin to fill again. And we start the whole thing all over. A couple volumes I do want you to notice. There's what's called end diastolic volume. This is the volume of blood in the ventricles at the end of diastole. That is right before the ventricles contract. So here is a mark right before the ventricles contract. Remember the blue is when the ventricles contract. So the volume of blood in the ventricles just before they contract, that would be end diastolic volume. So here would be another spot. You can measure end diastolic volume. 
So this is basically how much blood the ventricles can hold. Think of it as filling the ventricles is in diastolic volume. And systolic volume is the volume in the blood at the end of systole. So really, I mean, they're marking it here, but this line is flat, remember, because we're in isovolumetric ventricular relaxation, so it doesn't matter. But it's basically this, at, right at the end of systole, it's how much blood is in the ventricles. And so think of this as how much blood is left in the ventricles after I pushed or ejected as much blood as I can out of it. In other words, it's like a residual volume. I can't get all of the blood out. I can't squeeze it dry out of the ventricles. So I'm always gonna have a little bit of blood left in the ventricles after they contract and eject as much blood as they can. So that's end systolic volume, okay? Last of this, then again, is the heart sounds. The heart sounds are referred to as lub dub. If you listen to them in a stethoscope, you'd hear this lub dub, lub dub, lub dub. And that is those valves closing. So the lub sound occurs when the atrioventricular valves close. That is when the pressure in the ventricles increases higher than the atrial pressure. So blood pushes up against those AV valves, slamming them closed, and you hear lub. Then the dup sound is going to be when the ventricles start to relax, the pressure in the arteries is greater than the pressure in the ventricles. That forces the blood to kind of backtrack and hit those cusps of the semilunar valves, slamming those shut, and therefore you're making a dup sound. Now, when you listen to a heart in a stethoscope, so you wanna hear it, listen for heart murmurs, that is those stenoses, or regurgitations we talked about during the heart anatomy. If you have a, a regurg or, or a um, stenosis, you'll hear a swooshy sound or a whooshing sound in between the lup dup or after the lup dup. So it might be lup dup shh or lup shh dup. And depending on where in the heart you're listening, because you can actually position the stethoscope to listen to each valve, you can determine which valve is faulty and what's going on with that as well. So that ends our cardiac cycle uh, video lecture, and that's gonna get us now ready for the last video lecture on cardiac output.